Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss about blur group part 3. In this video we are going to discuss mainly on the cross wedge and transfusion reactions. First we see which group can be transfused to another. O blur group can be transfused to all O, A, B and A, B. The O blur group is universal donor. The next is A. A blur group can be transfused to A and AB. Next is B. B can be transfused to B and AB. And the last is AB. AB blur group can only be given to AB but the AB blur group can receive blood from all others. Now if we add RH blur group in this scenario then we can say that O negative blood type is universal donor because O negative blood group can be given to all from O negative to AB positive and AB positive group is called universal recipient because the AB positive blood group can receive blood from all blood groups O negative to AB positive. One important thing here is that the negative person donor can be given to positive recipient but the positive do uh, positive blood group cannot be given to negative recipient the approximate percentage of blood group among the humans the most common blood group is o positive next most common blood group is a positive and other blood groups are in the decreasing order O negative, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive and AB negative. The rarest blood group is AB negative. Now let's learn about the cross matching. There are two types of cross matching. First is major cross match and second is minor cross match. The major cross match defines by cross match between donors RBC and recipient serum. And the minor cross match is defined by cross match between donor serum and recipient RBC. The antibodies detected by the cross matches are of two types. First is IgM and second is IgG. The saline phase of cross match detects the IgM antibody and albumin and anti-human globulin phase detects the IgG antibody. Now let's learn the tube method of major cross match. First take the donor whole blood. Add 4 to 5 drops of donor whole blood into the new test tube and add normal saline. Prepare 5% suspension of donor whole blood. From this 5% suspension add 1 drop of RBCs into the new test tube and add 2 drops of recipient serum into the same test tube. Incubate for 60 minutes for 37 degrees centigrade. After incubation, wash 3 times and here you can check for agglutination in the microscope. If you found agglutination at this phase, then it is called the saline phase and it detects the IgM antibody. But if you don't find agglutination, then we can say that IgM antibody is absent but we still have to perform the AHG phase. After washing, add AHG, 2 drops of AHG into the tube. Incubate 5 minutes at room temperature. Centrifuge for 1 minute at 1500 RPM. And check for agglutination in the microscope. If agglutination is absent, then we can say that this cross match is compatible and blood product can be transfused to recipient. But if you found agglutination under the microscope, then we can say that cross match is incompatible and blood product cannot be transfused to recipient. Now let's learn the gel card method. First take the 5% suspension of donor whole blood and take 1 ml lease in another test tube. Add 10, 10 microliter of 5% suspension from the donor whole blood to lease test 
test tube and make 0.8% suspension. From this 0.8% suspension, add 50 microliter of RBCs into the gel card column. Now take the recipient serum, add 25 microliter of recipient serum into the same gel card column. Incubate at 37 degrees for 15 minutes and after 15 minutes centrifuge the gel card and read for the reactions. If the negative reaction appears when gel card column is clear and RBCs are settled at the bottom then we can say that this, this reaction is negative and cross match is compatible. So we can transfuse the blood product to recipient but if you or see the reaction between weak plus to hemolysis any of the reaction is present then we can say that cross match is incompatible and transfusion is not possible the gel card system is a simple sensitive rapid and innovative method for detection of antigen antibody hemagglutination reaction the gel card method testing takes 15 to 20 minutes as compared to 90 minutes by spin tube method which is an advantage in case of emergency blood transfusion and another advantage of gel card system is that it removes the observer bias now let's learn about the transfusion reactions most common symptoms and signs of transfusion reactions are fever chills urticaria and itching the severe symptoms and signs are respiratory distress high fever hypotension and red urine now let's learn in detail about transfusion reaction. First is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. It can occur due to the intravascular or extravascular hemolysis and it can be immune mediated or non-immune mediated. Immune mediated acute hemolytic reaction can occur as a result of recipient antibodies present to blood donor antigens and non-immune mediated transfusion reaction occur due to the RBC damage before the transfusion by heat or by incorrect osmotic conditions. The second is delayed hemolytic reaction. It occurs by an anamnestic response to foreign antigen that a patient was previously exposed to. Third is febrile non-hemolytic reaction. It occurs due to the cytokine release from the blood donor leukocyte. Fourth is simple allergic reaction. It occurs due to the hypersensitivity to foreign protein of donor. Fifth is anaphylactic reaction. It is similar to the simple allergic but it is a severe reaction. Sixth is a septic. It occurs due to the bacteria and bacterial products contamination in the blood product. Seventh is a transfusion related acute lung injury also called the trolley. It occurs due to the antibodies in the donor product reacts with the antigen in recipients and it leads to immune system release mediators which cause pulmonary edema. The transfusion associated circulatory overload also called the TACO. The transfusion causes hypervolemia and hypervolemia causes circulatory overload. The seventh is transfusion associated graft versus host disease. It results from the engraftment of donor lymphocyte commonly found in the cellular blood products into a immunocompromised recipient's bone marrow. Now let's learn how to monitor the transfusion when transfusion is ongoing. The vital signs are monitored and typically recorded at 15 minute intervals. A small amount of change in vital signs during the transfusion may be considered normal. The changes may include the following plus or minus 0.5 degree centigrade in temperature, plus or minus 5 respiration per minute, plus or minus 10 beats per minute in heart rate, plus or minus 20 mm Hg in blood pressure. Abnormal responses include hives, itching, fever greater than 1 degree centigrade above the temperature at the start of transfusion, chills, hypotension and dyspnea. Management of transfusion reaction. When a transfusion reaction is suspected, the transfusion should be stopped immediately and intravenous line should be kept open using the appropriate fluid, usually 0.9% saline. 
A clerical check should be performed by examining the product bag and confirming the patient's identification. A patient's vital sign should be monitored and recorded at 15 minute intervals. Post transfusion blood sample should be drawn and sent to the lab in addition to sending the blood bag and tubing if possible. A blood bank generally completes the additional testing and clerical checks to rule out an incompatible transfusion. A treatment of specific transfusion reaction is most often supportive. For example, antihistamines such as diphenhydramine can be given for a mild allergic reaction or antipyrotics can be given to non-hemolytic febrile transfusion reaction. These are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.